Hitcher is a 1986 thriller which stars Rutger Hauer and C. Thomas Howell. It is written by Eric Redd and directed by Robert Harmon. It follows the very simple story of this young man, C. Thomas Howell, who is making a road trip across America. He's delivering a car. He's getting very bored. He's falling asleep at the wheel. So he picks up a hitchhiker, hopefully to help keep him awake. And oh boy, does he help to keep him awake. Because this guy, played by Rutger Hauer, turns out to be an absolute psychopath. And the rest of the movies are basic, basically a cat and mouse game as to who is going to kill who. Now before I get into my review for this movie, I just want to say Cody Leach is also reviewing this film. So head on over to his channel if you haven't been there already and check out his review. Now he told me he was reviewing this and he asked me would I like to get in on the action and review the film at the same time. I don't know if that's because he was aware of my feelings about this film or whether that's just sheer fluke or not but um yeah i love this movie i've always loved this movie it's one of my favorite movies of of the 80s it just barely puts a foot wrong quite frankly robert Harmon, the director i can't think of anything else that he's done of note for me personally uh, however, writer Eric Red has done several movies that uh, are definitely worth checking out. Uh, a couple that he did for Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow directed uh, Near Dark, which was written by Eric Red, one of the best vampire films ever made. Uh, she also made Blue Steel, which was written by Eric Red, which is a really great cop thriller. And there's a few other movies that Red himself has directed that he penned by himself. Um, and, they're, and they're pretty decent as well and worth checking out. So definitely an underrated filmmaker, um, particularly a strong screenwriter, I would say. The Hitcher is brilliant in its simplicity. Um, one of the movies I would most closely kind of correlate this film to is, and this may be a bit of a wacky choice for some, but I would say The Terminator. Um... It's a very similar kind of cat and mouse thing in which you know, you've know got one guy who's almost unstoppable who t at one point takes out a police station not on the level of the T-800 uh, but certainly in, in a scary way. It is a film that straddles that line between thriller and full-on slasher horror. The character played by Rutger Hauer, the hitcher, the one who thumbs for a lift and turns psycho, is just fantastic. Uh, like next to Blade Runner, um, I would say this is Rutger Hauer's best performance. Certainly, his most memorable for me. What he's able to do, uh, surprisingly, with, with very little, is is quite remarkable. I don't I don't say that as disrespect to uh, Eric Red's script. I think his script um, is one of those scripts that really does give a lot of leeway for actors to just go to town on it and and you know bring their A game and when you've got someone like Rutger Hauer who is on their A game they bring all kinds of levels of crazy. I think the reason it reminds me of Terminator beyond that cat and mouse aspect is just the fact that the film is so hard to fit into one box. It, it's you know it's an action film, it's a thriller, it's a horror, it's a coming of age drama. This is ultimately a story about this young man He's stepping out into the world. He's traveling across country after, like, you get the sense from the start that he's a bit of a mama's boy because, you know, like, the first words out of his mouth. My mother told me never to do this. Just in that one line, it kind of gives you the impression of this guy who's quite innocent, quite, you know, not really been out in the world all that much. He's a bit of a mama's boy, listens to his mum's advice, although doesn't in this case, kind of breaks it, but acknowledges that he's breaking his mum's advice. So so you get, yeah, he's, he's quite wet behind the ears. And then this major thing happens with this guy that he pulls over, who turns out to be an absolute psychopath. And it the film really is about what what's he going to do over the course of the movie of facing off against this hitcher and making tons of hard choices 
he goes from being a boy to being a man. What kind of man by the end of the film is, well, there's a whole other film in that, I think, uh, but uh, certainly he has changed. He is not the fresh-faced young boy that picked up a hitcher at the beginning of the movie. So that's a really great character arc there. And, and I feel like we get quite a bit with Rutger Hauer's character as well, with the hitcher, um, this, this, this bad guy. Even though it's never really explicitly spelled out to us, there are hints, there are clues in his behaviour, in some of the, the things he says... Um, it's, it's almost, again, to draw another film correlation, although the, the, much later, um, I, I think of the Joker in The Dark Knight. This is a character who comes into the movie, we don't know his backstory, and he causes chaos. He is there to cause chaos until somebody takes him out. And I feel like that's, that's his goal. He's looking for a worthy adversary, he's looking for someone to kill him. And I get the sense that there is something in this guy's past, even though, as I say, it's never expi explicitly told to us, uh, but I, I, I get the feeling this guy has a death wish and he's taking out as many people as he can until that happens, almost, almost begging for someone to take him out, to take him down. There's a line of dialogue towards the beginning of the film uh, where, it, where it's, it's addressed to see Thomas Howell's character, Rutger Hauer's talk, you know, the hitch is talking to Howell's character. Say what? <laughs> I want to die. You almost get the sense that while, while Howell's character is hearing it from one way, just because of the way that Hauer plays it, you almost get the sense that it's actually a confession. It's actually, this is, this is, this is how he's feeling, this is what he wants. He wants to be stopped. He wants someone to put him down. Definitely from here on out, big, big spoilers. So if you've never seen this movie, and if not, get on it as soon as possible. But from here on out, big spoilers. So we get this character played by Gen uh, Jennifer Jason Lee. This was the first thing I'd ever seen her in, to be honest. Uh, it made me take note of her. She's a very small role in this film. But she does a lot with it. Again, and again, because of what they do with the character, it leaves quite a lasting impact. They make you like her. So she plays this woman who works in a diner. Howell's character kind of stops by. He's, he, want, he needs a phone. He's, he, he wants to contact the police. And she, you know, he, he waits at this diner. She serves him a meal. And then stuff kicks off because the hitcher catches up with him. But she kind of becomes his ally. Uh, and, and she's got no real reason to trust this guy. He seems a bit wacko. The hitcher has kind of pinned all this evidence on him, made him look like the, the, the wacko. Uh, but for whatever reason, she kind of trusts him and she goes along with him. And then ultimately, she, you know, she, she starts to really help him um, beco become his ally. And because of that, she's very likable. And then something happens to her where she, she's caught in this, again, Reminds you of the Joker. You know, if you look at what the Joker does, the way he, he sets something up so that a character has a specific choice. You do this, then this person dies. But if you do this, then that person dies. You know, this, this kind of thing. And uh, the Hitcher's character sets her up in a trap, which it basically boils down to the, the choices that Howell's character makes means that her life hangs in the balance she literally hangs in the balance uh, well ultimately that goes wrong <laughs> and she cops it uh, and you just you're not expecting it uh like i wasn't anyway because she's she's the love interest she's the she's she's the one who believes in him she's a woman as well you know it's like it's, it's, it's talking about the age of final girls you can't kill her she's you know she's got to survive no when i saw this way back when i think i was about 10 or 11 when I first saw this. It just, it was quite shocking. And, and then the thing is, you don't see anything. You see nothing. It's all implied. You don't need to see it. But it's just horrendous. Uh, just the thought of it and see, seeing her strung up between the, the, this lorry and the trailer. It's like, you know, and, and when you see him kind of slightly letting go of the clutch and stuff. And, and, and you're just like. They, they cut to her and you see her body stretching a bit. It's enough to make you build a picture in your mind 
that once he takes his foot off completely, it just fills you with a sense of dread. And that's something, that's a lesson that the uh, the remake never kind of cotton on to. They, they just thought, oh yeah, yeah, if we make it bloody and gorier, then that, that's better, right? It's the same film, but but gorier. And, and by doing that, they, they miss a trick. They, 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 they miss an element of the film, of this film, that is done brilliantly, which is that we never see the Hitcher killing someone if Howell's character doesn't see it. Uh, it's something that I noticed when I was watching it. All the way through the film, there's loads of deaths, there's lots of murders, but the only ones that we get to see are the ones that Howell's character gets to see. Um, everything is from Howell's perspective, his character's perspective. So it's always, we always see the aftermath of things. We always, you know, we, we hear things. So we don't see Jennifer Jason Lee get torn into, but we know what happens. We hear it. We are inside the cabin when that happens because we're with Harold, Howell's character. We're feeling what he feels. We're seeing what he sees. We're hearing what he hears. Um, it's a really great way of getting us deeper into that character's mindset, being with him all the way. I love the landscape that we exist in within this movie as well. It's like a you know arid desert landscape. It's really in keeping with everything that's going on. Um, it just it just feels like the right environment for this kind of story to play out in which this soulless human being is just wreaking havoc uh, and, and this, this guy just seems lost. You know, he's, he's, he's in the middle of nowhere. He doesn't seem to have any help. No one seems to believe him. He's lost. He's, he's just in a desolate landscape. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely suitable for the story that's being told. You, you could have told this story in a city. You know, you could, ha you could have had these events play out in a city, but uh, I don't think it would work as well as the environment in which it does play out in this film. I like the cinematography in this as well, the use of wide shots, the camera is quite static for most of the time, we're not all over the place, and I feel like that's in keeping with the mindset of these two characters, particularly the Hitcher's character, who's just very calm all the time, very matter-of-fact about what he does, um, I just, and I, yeah, just having that, having those wides really feeds into the isolation of our central character, Howell's character, and the stillness of that really feeds into the, the, the character of the Hitcher. I love the tension that is built up throughout this film, uh, like the more, the, like I say, the, the, the more kind of little things that the Hitcher does to kind of pin the blame onto Howell's character. You know, so it's, it's like, it starts off that his, his story might sound, you know, plausible, but then everything starts getting twisted and turned. And before you know it, you're like, how is he going to get out of this? Like, now everyone's looking at him as if he's the one who did it. It's not looking good for him. And because of that, little mo like moments like that, that build on top of each other and on top of each other, it just, it just adds to the tension of... What's this character going to do? How is he going to get out of this mess? And how is he going to turn it all around? Props too to Jeffrey Dimon, who plays Captain Estridge. Uh, he's, so he's a, a cop, a sheriff, uh, who comes into the film more towards the end, really. Uh, I've always liked Dimon as an actor. He's a character actor, kind of actor that you name and most people go, huh? But then you say, you know, Shawshank Redemption, this, that and the other. And you're like, oh yeah, that guy, I know his face, I didn't know his name. Uh, but he's, he's a really great character actor and he's just, he has a way about him that kind of engenders trust. Um, you know, even though there's, a, a, there's not much there, I guess, uh, from a writing standpoint. Um, because cause it's not really necessary for that character. But then you put an actor like Damon into that role and he, again, like I say, he, he turns it into this this character that is more than, than the sum of its parts, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, I, he, he, someone you need, I think, towards the end of the film, once everything's starting to unravel, once Howell's character is, is finally being seen to, to not be this mass murdering psycho that 
the hitcher has painted him out to be because he's really gone through the ringer by that point. You need someone on his side. You need someone to kind of give you that sense that he's believed. And, and, and I think Demun's character is that, even though he does still come at loggerheads with with uh, Howell's character because Howell's desperate about stopping this guy and Demun's like, y y you're not above the law. You can't. You can't go after this guy. Is it right to take a life in order to save other people's? It's a moral dilemma. It's a moral question. But ultimately, it's one that that character answers through action. So as you can tell, I really love this movie. I, I find it very difficult to find flaws with it. Um, I probably could because I do believe that there's no such thing as a perfect movie. But I love it. Uh, why why try to pick it apart when you don't feel like you need to? Uh, yeah, it's five out of five for me. It's one of my favourite movies of the 80s. If I did a top 10 80s movies, it would probably make its way into, into that top 10. Um, but yeah, five out of five from me. Uh, thank you, Cody, for giving me a heads up on this one. Uh, glad I could join you on it, uh, given how much I love this film. Uh, but yeah, what about you guys? Have you seen The Hitcher? Have you seen the remake? Uh, let me know which one's your favourite. There's only one right answer to that, by the way. Uh, but yeah, leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the film. Thank you for watching this review. And until next time, cracking.